Good morning, Liberty Church International, and welcome to today's service. We are so excited to be connecting with you today, and what a blessing it is to be able to band together with our brothers and sisters despite our circumstances. Now, we know that the church is more than four walls and a building. We know that we are the church, but we encourage you during this time to unite with fellow believers in your homes and engage in service together. Be sure to take a picture or a small video, post it to our social media sites tagging Liberty Church International, and use the hashtags below. Now, the flow of service will be a bit different. In just a few moments, we'll enter into worship together and sing a few songs. We encourage you to crank up the volume on your TV and engage in worship as you usually would. Then, we'll share a few announcements and updates. After that, we'll hear an inspired message, and then in closing, gives you an opportunity to give of your tithes and your offerings. In all, you can expect today's service to last about 60 minutes. Our vision here is life transformation. We are a church of imperfect people striving to be more like Jesus, and we do that through making, maturing, and mobilizing. So wherever you are in life, let us connect with you and see how we can help. Whether it's a prayer request, praise report, or simple life update, feel free to comment below, email us at info at lci.online, or use the link in our app, Church Center, to fill out a communication card. We know that our current circumstances aren't particularly ideal, but they do present us with the opportunity to truly rise up and be the church. And we are going to do everything that we can to equip you and encourage you through that. So please be sure to check your email regularly, our social media sites listed below, our app, which you can find in the App Store under Church Center. Log in and find all the information on there. Well, it looks like worship is about to start, so thank you again for being here today. Now we invite you to join us in worship. Good morning, everybody. Welcome to service today. It is such a blessing to be connecting with you and to worship with you today. What a wonderful, amazing day that is to just be united together as one. So listen, before we get started, I just want to pray us in. Dear Heavenly Father, thank you for this wonderful day. Thank you for your promises, your faithfulness, your goodness. Thank you for being who you are, who you say you are, Father. And we thank you for your good grace. We thank you for the unity in your body that is coming forth. And we continue to move forward together as one with you as our head. In your mighty name we pray. And everybody says, amen. amen. All right, listen, turn up the volume on your device and let's just worship together. Sing people. People come together, strangers, neighbors, our blood is one. Children of generations, of every nation, of kingdom come. But don't let your heart be troubled. Hold your head up high. Don't fear no evil. Fix your eyes on this one truth. God is madly in love with you. So take courage, hold on. Be strong. Remember where our help comes from. Oh, 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 Is in his blood. 
shout of praise in your homes this morning. Thank you, Jesus, for being the light of heaven, our friend forever, our redemption, and our salvation. And we will follow your lead everywhere we go. Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. This is my worship. This is my offering. In every moment, I withhold nothing. I'm learning to trust you, even when I can't see it. And even in suffering, I have to believe it. If you say it's wrong, then I'll say no. If you say release, I'm letting go. If you're in it with me, I'll begin. When you say to jump, I'm diving in. If you say be still, then I will wait. If you say to trust, I will obey. I don't want to follow my own ways. I'm done chasing feelings. Spirit lead me. Ooh. Come on, church, it felt like a burden. It felt like a burden, but Ooh, once I could grasp it, it, you took me further, further Ooh. than I was asking. Amen. And simply to see you. It's worth it all. My life is an altar. Let your fire fall. If you 
say it's wrong, then I'll say no. If you say release, I'm letting go. If you're in it with me, I'll begin. When you say to jump, I'm diving in. If you say be still, then I will wait. If you say to trust, I will obey. Teach me how to follow in your ways. I'm done chasing feelings. Spirit, lead me. Oh, Spirit, lead me. Spirit, lead me. All hope is kind, and your word is all I've got. I have to believe you still bring water from the rocks. Satisfy my thirst to love me at my worst. And even when I don't remember, you remind me of my worth. Don't trust my ways, trading in my thoughts. I've laid down everything, cause you're all that I want. I've landed on my knees, this is the cup you have for me. And even when it don't make sense, I'm gonna let your spirit lead. Spirit lead. Oh, I'm gonna let your spirit lead. I'm gonna let your spirit lead. Yeah, spirit lead me. Spirit. If you say it's wrong, then I'll say no. If you say release, I'm letting go. If you're in it with me, I'll begin. But when you say to jump, I'm diving in. If you say be still, then I will wait. If you say to trust, I will obey. You're the only truth, the life, the way. I'm done chasing feelings. Spirit, lead me. Well, Spirit, we thank you for leading us, for being our guide. Thank you, Jesus, for the sacrifice that you made that allowed the helper to come into our lives. So Holy Spirit, we follow after you. Wherever you lead, we will go. And we thank you for being faithful and guiding us through the dark times and the light times, the hard times and the easy times. And help us to be just as faithful. And we will continue to give you all the praise and glory. In your mighty name we pray. Amen. Oh, Liberty family, what a joy it was to worship with you today. We are so blessed with technology and everything, all the advancements of our world to be able to connect this way. But we can't wait to see you in person. Right now, I want to transition it over to Lena for some announcements. Hey, Liberty family, Lainey here with a few announcements and updates, but before I get started, I want to throw out a huge happy Mother's Day to all you lovely ladies out there, and another shout out to Pastor Scott because tomorrow is his birthday. So happy birthday, Pastor Scott. We love you. Okay, so to the announcements and updates. 
First, we have prayer on Tuesdays and Thursdays from 12 o'clock to 1 o'clock. Then on Wednesdays, we have real life discipleship in person at 7 p.m. But don't forget to mark your calendars for May 24th because at 10 a.m. we'll be meeting at our Legacy Park campus to have a huge outdoor awesome service with the baptism bash added in. But until then, continue checking your social media and your emails for updates coming from the church. I hope you guys have a wonderful Mother's Day on this beautiful Sunday and enjoy the service. Good morning and happy Mother's Day. What a privilege it is just to honor all the other moms out there. You know, and this is certainly not the way that I would have pictured celebrating a Mother's Day service. And I'm sure you're saying the same thing, but here I am and there you are. So let's make the most of today. And I am encouraged to be able to share the word of God with you. But before we jump into the word, I just want to uh, take a minute as we are honoring this day as Mother's Day. I was thinking about um, how many remembers the almighty mom purse. And when I say that, I am meaning the, the purse that is the endless purse that there is so much stuff in there that the whole um, supermarket or the whole drugstore is down in that purse. And I just remember, you know, you could always say, hey, mom, do you have a Band-Aid? Sure, it's in my purse. Or mom, what about a sewing kit? It's in my purse. Or uh, mom, what about a milkshake? I mean, not a milkshake. She probably didn't have a milkshake in her purse. But anyway, the almighty mom purse. So this goes out to all my fellow mothers. If you've been one that has carried around the mom purse, you know what I'm talking about. There ends up things in that purse that you had no idea even got there because little hands probably pick something up and it just got tucked away in there. So Happy Mother's Day to all my fellow mothers. I love you all. Um, but before we jump into today's message, how about I just opening up, open us with a word of prayer. God, we love you. We thank you for this day that you have designed, that you have created. So God, I thank you for all the mothers out there. I pray that you will just bless them with an amazing day, Lord, as they share with their family and their friends, their loved ones. God, just bless them on this day. God, we honor each one in their in their respective ways, God. We just praise you for them and uh, the impacts that they've had on our lives in so many ways. And so, God, I just pray that you will reveal the word in the way that you want it to be revealed today. I thank you that you have equipped me. The Holy Spirit is here to give life to this word. So we love you and we thank you and praise you in Jesus' name. Amen. So today's message is called Parent with Purpose. And this goes right along with the Great Commission that we find in Matthew 28, verses uh, 18 through 20. And this is a scripture that we've been challenging all of our Wednesday night disciple makers to uh, remember and uh, just be reminded of our purpose here on earth. And it starts out where Jesus is saying that all authority in heaven and on earth has been given to me. So therefore, go and make disciples, baptizing them in the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit, and teaching them all that I have commanded them. And surely I am with you even to the ends of the earth. So I want to just encourage you as a disciple maker, because that's what we're, we are going to be talking about today, to memorize that verse as well. You know, because today is Mother's Day, and we're not going to just focus on mothers solely, um, I want to focus on the family in general. And mothers play such a particular role in the lives of children. You know, generally speaking, we could see um, earlier on in history where moms were at home with the children all the time. They may not have had an outside employment. So they were there. They were the sole encourager, the sole uh, supporter of their children all day long from the moment they were up until bedtime even. The dad was there in the picture, but because typically or generally speaking, the family structure was the dad out, work, out working. Um, so I'm not just saying that the mom is just the sole influencer. Mom and dad 
but that not only moms and dads, but grandparents, the guardians that have been placed over these children. You know, we have such a great, great responsibility as parents to sow into our children. And so that's what I'm going to be talking a little bit today. And you know, the church, the church has been given um, as a resource to parents to come alongside them, to help equip them. They are not there to replace them. Did you hear me? They are a resource to the parents. So that's what we have been given. You know, over the last few weeks, because of what has happened with um, with the situation we're in in the world, you know, being shut down completely. um, You know, I am so proud of our children's ministry director, Lena, because she has taken it upon herself to help provide provide some resources for you parents she has taken it upon herself to put those things out to you so you would be equipped to help teach in your home so i am so proud of her and i hope that you can give her a shout out and let her know that you definitely appreciate it but you know what it's one thing for her to uh, get the materials prepared make the effort to get them into your hands But if you never did anything with those, then it was useless. It was pointless. It was laid to the side and maybe not even picked up and reviewed. Well, shame on you. Come on, parents. That was some resources that was given on you. So if you've gotten them and you haven't uh, ran through any of them, I, I want to encourage you to do that. But this is such a value that you have being in the home. But you know, the church, the church wants to equip our parents. We want to equip each and every person to be the disciple makers that Jesus Christ has commanded us to be. That he said in Matthew 28, that we all should go and make disciples. You know, actually the church is supposed to help you. And in Ephesians 4, 11 through 13, I'm going to read this out of the Amplified Version. So you will find it in Ephesians 4, 11. And his gifts to the church were varied, and he himself appointed some as apostles, some as prophets, and some as evangelists, and some as pastors and teachers to shepherd and guide and instruct. That's what we as the leadership of the church have been given to you to help to shepherd, guide, and instruct. For what? so that we could fully equip and perfect God's people. That's what we want to do so much is is to equip you so that you are effective to build up the body of Christ. And when we think about building up the body of Christ, we think about um, coming to church and all the people that are around us. I want you to stop and ponder and think about building up the body of Christ within your home. The little ones that you have been given for such a short time those are your responsibility to a responsibility to help disciple. So I just want to encourage you. You know, the senior leadership team at the beginning of the year started talking about that great commission and what our part should be as the church and and the leadership. And so that takes us back to that scripture of Matthew 28, 18 through 20 about the great commission about we should be going and make making disciples. And guess what? That great commission was not just for the disciples that were following Christ in the Bible. It wasn't just for the Bible times. It was for you and I today. Every one of us have been called to do this. Amen? Come on, shout an amen to me. Yeah. You know what? We started introducing the workbook, the workbook called Real Life Discipleship. This is equipping disciples to be disciple makers. You know, this study began five weeks ago. And who would have thought we would have been in this situation that we are in where the churches have closed, um, schools have closed, um, all kinds of businesses um, ha- have been shut down completely. And, um, but you know what? We made a commitment and we said we're not going to let the Great Commission stop just because the world seems to have shut down. So we as a church continue to be committed to doing that. So we started that five weeks ago um, on the the workbook, uh, Real Life Discipleship. So when we're talking about being disciple makers, again, who better to start with but your own home, your own children. They are so pliable. 
And that has that's who God has given you. Amen. So this morning, I want to encourage you and I even want to challenge you. All the moms, all the dads, all the future moms and dads to be. If you are expecting right now, um, hats off to you. Just get ready. Um, you're just fixing to turn a new corner in your life that you don't even know about. But all the future parents, um, the grandparents, the guardians, I challenge you today. Live out your faith. Embrace your role as a discipleship maker in your home. You know, so much more is caught than taught. That's one of the phrases that has just stuck with me over the years, you know. Let me ask you this question. How are you living your life out in front of your children? That is so powerful. You know, the landscape of our home has certainly changed over the last 50 to 60 days. And you know what? I'm not just talking about the natural aspects. Although I love the beauty of the greening of the grass, the trees budding out, the beautiful flowers. But you know what? In that natural sense, if I was looking at my my yard, my flower beds, and if there was something that I didn't like or just wasn't right, what would I do? I would go in and make a change. I would change it. And so you know what? That's what I did in the natural. Our flower beds, uh, our yard was not the prettiest <laughs> after the winter months. So I went and got, or I, Pastor Scott and I, went and got um, some beautiful flowers and um, some mulch to add to it. And it's just amazing. That little bit of element changes a whole lot. But, you know, when looking at even our home life, you know, the landscape of our home life has definitely changed over the last 50 to 60 days. And, you know, uh, if you're not happy with the situation, what it looks like in your home, guess what? You have that privilege, that place, that position to make changes. You know, some changes have actually been forced upon us. And, um, you know, with the regulations of the stay-at-home orders, wow, that has hit so hard on so many families, so many homes. You know, I know that uh, it certainly has created a lot of change for sure. How many can say change? Change? <laughs> oh my, oh my. Come on, say change again. You know, all the kiddos now became homeschoolers. Who would have thought? <laughs> Some parents became teachers. Who would have thought? A lot of parents had to start officing from home. Some parents have even lost their home, their jobs, and therefore they are just home uh, on a permanent basis right now. You talk about change. Did you know that change is hard? Change isn't easy. Change isn't always liked. But you know what? Change does require work. And you know, when we're looking at the word disciple, and discipleship, that takes work. And when we're talking about even in your own home, there's a lot of change that I know has been taking place. But parents, let me ask you this. Do you feel lost when it comes to defining yourself as a disciple maker? Or even more fitting, do you feel totally lost, more specific to your home? Do you feel lost um, as a disciple maker of your home? So let's be real and let's be honest. I think that's how so many parents feel. They feel like, or let me say, it has been pushed off onto the church as the church's responsibility. Let me just show up on a Sunday morning and let whoever shows up in the classroom uh, be the ones that disciple my kids. But guess what? That's not the word. That's not what the word tells us that should, that's the way we should be operating as parents. In Proverbs 22 and 6, it says, Train up a child in the way he should go, and when he is old, he will not depart from it. And then Ephesians 6 and 4, and I'm reading this out of the ESV translation. It says, Fathers, do not provoke your children to anger, but bring them up in the discipline and instruction of God. So guess what? It's not the church's responsibility. It is you as parents, as guardians, as grandparents. 
Don't slack that off on the church. Like I said before, the church wants to partner with you. It wants to come alongside you and just reinforce what you are teaching and training in your home. You are probably saying, yeah, I've heard those scriptures before, but I don't know what to do. Um, You know, when it actually comes down to it, I don't really know where to begin. And I think that's the truth for a lot of um, families. But I want to take you to the scripture in uh, Deuteronomy chapter 6, verses 5 through 9. And I'm going to read this out of the message translation, so you'll have to bear with me because I'm going to have to look at my my notes. Um, You know, so many times growing up, King James Version of the Bible was the one that we learned in our Sunday school, in our children's programs. You know, and so King James sometimes is more like somewhere in there. And I'm like, wait a minute, they're quoting this, but it's wrong. So anyway, back to the point. (laughs) That was a side trail. But anyway, back to the point. I'm going to be reading out of the message translation, Deuteronomy 6, 5 through 9. It says, love God, your God, with your whole heart. Love him with all that's in you. Love him with all you've got. Then verses 6 through 9, write these commandments that I've given you today on your hearts. Get them inside of you and get them inside your children. Talk about them when you, wherever you are, sitting at home or walking in the street. Talk about them from the time you get up in the morning to when you fall into bed at night. So this was our simple instructions right here. It's talking about wherever we go, we should be talking about the about God and about the goodness of God. So wherever you go. But I'm going to break it down for you with some tips. So hang on with me just a minute. So you might be still asking this these questions. Where do we begin? What do I say? Do I really know enough myself? How can I be a disciple maker if I don't feel like I'm equipped enough? Well, guess what? We're going to help you in that. Amen. We are here as the body to help equip you. You know, discipling our kids is far too important to hand off to others. Like I mentioned before, so many times we want to hand them off to those in the classroom at church and say, okay, you do something with them. They only have maybe 20, 30 minutes, maybe sometimes a little bit longer, but that's not enough. We're talking about a lifestyle, a lifetime of commitment with somebody that we want to help disciple. So let me share just six Uh, little tips that will help you in your disciple making of your children and let me pause just a moment you're probably thinking I hope you haven't tuned out yet thinking I'm not a parent this doesn't apply to me guess what we are all called spiritual parents so even if you don't have a natural child that you are raising up that I am giving you some encouragement for just remember you are a spiritual parent and there is someone still out there that needs you to walk alongside them So that brings me to our first point, and the number one is feed your own growth. You can't give out what you don't have. The best teaching comes from when you have been diving in, when you have been feeding yourself. So whatever you've been feeding yourself, guess what? That's what's going to naturally come out. So in this part about feed your own growth, careful what you're feeding yourself. Because it becomes evident in what is coming out. And your children need the word of God being fed to them. So guess what? You need to be feeding yourself the word of God. Dive into God's word. Dive into the depth that he has for you. Read helpful books to encourage you, to strengthen your faith, to understand your walk with Christ. And when you do this, guess what? Your confidence is just going to skyrocket. And your kids are going to so benefit from that information, that material that you are absorbing within yourself. So remember, you can't give out what hasn't first been put in. So that brings me to want to encourage you. You know, we say that we want to resource you, that we want to give you tools, and that's exactly what we have provided. Five weeks ago, we started on Wednesday nights a, a, a teaching that's called Real Life Discipleship. And so I encourage you, If you haven't jumped on board with that, now is the perfect time because guess what? 
I am spurring you on in the name of Jesus. Come on, I'm giving you a spiritual kick in the pants, maybe, so to speak, or um, just that extra nudge that you need, knowing that you can do it because God's got you. He's not going to abandon you. Come on, he's not going to. He is going to equip you. We have the power and the gift of the Holy Spirit within us. So guess what? That is what's going to come out if you have been feeding that spirit man. In 2 Timothy 2.15, out of the King James Version, it says, Study to show yourself approved unto God, a workman that needs not to be ashamed, but rightly dividing the word of truth. How many knows that we don't have to prove ourselves to anyone else? It's only to God. So when we commit ourselves to feed ourselves in that spirit realm, we're proving ourselves unto God, and he is going to equip you. Amen? He's not going to leave you. So number two is set realistic expectations. Oh, my goodness, my goodness. I cannot, I cannot convince you enough of this. You know, one of the main problems we as parents, man, we... Um, we put so much pressure on ourselves. And when we do that, guess what happens? We set ourselves up to fail. You know what else happens? We are constantly comparing ourselves to other families and what they are doing. And you know what I want to just shout out to you right now? Stop it! (laughs) Stop comparing yourself to everyone else that you see on Facebook. That's not you. That's not who God has designed. He has designed you. He has given you your family to equip. So I just want to encourage you. You know, you just might, you might think, well, again, I don't know where to start start or what to do. Um, What would be some practical things that I could just begin with? Well, you know what? I just encourage you at dinner time, get a Bible story that is very simple to understand and just start talking about it around the table. Talk about the elements of that story with your kiddos and get them to feed back. See what they even know. They may, na- they may know more than what you think because of what they have learned in our classrooms because our teachers are doing such a phenomenal job. So again, we are in partnership with one another. So start there. But don't set those unrealistic expectations on yourself because all you're doing is setting yourself up to fail. So again, stop comparing yourself. Um, make some new rhythms and routines for your family. Um, Get some ideas. You can, you can research some ideas to help you, but don't, don't think that you have to be just like other families that you are seeing. So number three is see family discipleship as a way of life, not a program. You know, this came around um, in our Wednesday night teaching, I think this past Wednesday, um, where we talked about This can't be a program-driven discipleship. It has to be a personal-driven discipleship. And what I mean by that, it's within relationship. And who better else are you in relationship than with your kiddos? You are there with them, just like Deuteronomy 6 talks about. You are there walking with them every day. You are taking them to ball practice. They are going to the grocery store with you. So what did Deuteronomy remind us to do? It reminded us to talk about the commandment of God, which is love God with all your heart and the things of God. So I just want to encourage you, just like Deuteronomy 6 talked about, as you go. You know, that's just the way Jesus did it too. When he and his disciples, it was they were there together. And as they were going, that's how discipleship was happening. And that's the model that we have to look at and that we have to uh, replicate for our own families. You know, Jesus did this with his disciples and he showed them and he taught them. And it was because he was in relationship with them. So again, who better than your own family that you're in relationship with. You know, we can look at um, things like um, when we're sitting down to watch a movie or um, we're watching a show or listening to to music, um, talk about elements of the Bible that come out of those. You know, that is something that always happens at our house. Never fails. Never fails. Pastor Scott, he always has to relate something in a movie that we're watching he has to pause it, and he says, okay, now this is what I see, this is what I understand, da 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 He's like, I was just watching the movie. But you know what? That was careless on me 
Because God wants to encourage us that in, in our everyday moments and everything that we are doing, we have to find the opportunity that God is just laying there before us. So I have to just, yeah, honey, I see that now. I didn't see that. That's what I usually have to do whenever Pastor Scott pauses the movie. So I encourage you, take that time with your kids. Um, every moment is an opportunity that you can uh, share what God is showing you. So let's go on to point number four. Be a guide, not a general. You know, as parents, we often think that we are generals because we're always barking out orders, or so it seems. Um, it's do this, make the bed, carry it, carry the trash out, take the dog out, feed the dog, vacuum the room, whatever it might be. So I could see where even in my own life, it feels like that you are a general. But let me just remind you that you are a guide. Just like a guide, a, tra a trail guide travels with you and beside you. That trail guide doesn't just stay back at the campsite and just says, hey, follow that um, broken limb over there and maybe you'll find the rest of your way or maybe they give you a map. That's not what the trail guide does. They are right there beside you walking through every element that you're going through, that you are faced with. And that's just like we are with our own children, um, even those that we are discipling. We are right there walking beside them, um, taking them through the different elements and, and saying, you can make it, you can do it. We're not barking out orders and just saying, hey, you should have turned left or you should have done this or you should have read this chapter, but you didn't. What was the deal? That's not what it's about. We are there to encourage them just like the trail guide is doing and um so it makes the journey of discipleship a whole lot friendlier. So let's jump to number five. Teach by example. It has been said that people will remember more of what you do than what you say. Oh man, do we have to be careful with that. We have to guard ourselves so hard in that. You know, children, they're watching you, whether you realize it or not. And they're mocking you, they're mimicking you in the good or the bad. So what are you showing them? How is the Bible framing your life in your everyday, in the home, at work, wherever? How, is, how are you letting the Bible frame your life so that it can be um, a mimic to those that you are around, your family, for instance? You know, you need to model this transformation in your life around your kids. Remember, more is caught than taught you know um we don't have little ones in our house except for grandkids now when i say littles i'm talking about ones that really mimic and mock everything that you're trying to do you know and little rawlings our grandson you know he's uh, almost three and a half now i think but um he definitely wants to do whatever you're doing and we have to be so careful because even the things that we say they want to repeat so what are you saying? Are you guarding yourself? Are you allowing the words of God to come out of you or the words of other things to come out of you? We have to be so careful. I'm reminded of an example from my mother-in-law, Virginia, when she used to um, watch children in her home. I remember this story of a little, a little fella. I think he might have been around three years old. Um, they were having lunch one day at the, the table, and all of a sudden, he picks up a green bean between his fingers and starts doing this. And Virginia says, what are you doing? He goes, I'm moking. I'm moking. Well, guess what? He had to see that somewhere. So in order, to see, in order for him to mimic that, he had to see that by somebody. So I just want to encourage you, family, uh, parents, careful what you're doing because there are little eyes that are watching you. There are little ears that are listening. There are hands and feet that are wanting to do exactly what you are doing. So, oh, be careful, little eyes, what you see. Oh, be careful, little hands, what you do. Oh, be careful, little mouth, what you say. I think that's an old song. You might look that up again. So number six, here we go. You need to connect them deeply within your church. And when I say that, it just brings me back to what I mentioned earlier on, that the church is coming alongside you, parents, to help further equip you and help further equip your kiddos. 
we are in this together. Not one is better than the other. Not one needs to do it over the other. We need to do this together. You know, God has given the church, this local community of faith believers, to come alongside each other to encourage and to echo what you are doing in the home. So we need to partner together. Our kids need to know that you love and value the church. So let me encourage you, prioritize your involvement in church. I don't mean because you have to or you should, but I mean because you want to. I so want to encourage you that you want to be a part of what God's doing in the local church, that you instill that in your children so much that it's not we have to go to church today or should we go to church today? No, it's we get to go to church. So I want to encourage you in that, that you will encourage your, your family that, that you're doing this because you want to. You know, we are here for you. Liberty Church International, our leadership, pa our, as pastors, we are here for you. Um, you know, now more than ever, we have seen um, what it is like to, be, to not be able to gather as a body of believers. My heart has, has ached over the last five to six weeks, and I hope that yours has too. Do you realize that we need each other? We need each other to continue to grow and mature in the body of Christ. You know, I hope that you have missed this fellowship together as body of believers. So I want to just encourage you in a couple of scriptures before we close. In Proverbs 27, verse 17 in the ESV translation, it says, iron sharpens iron, and one man sharpens another. Hebrews 10, 24 through 25 out of the Amplified Version. And I do have to read this because I haven't memorized the Amplified Version. It says, and let us consider how we may encourage one another to love and to do good deeds, not forsaking our meeting together as some believers have, but as believers for worship and instruction, we come together to encourage one another. And all the more faithfully as you see the day of Christ's return approaching. Did you hear that? We can't forsake the meeting together because we need each other to worship together, to be instructed together. Amen, amen. I so encourage you today, parents, future parents, grandparents, guardians, Take these six simple steps, the one about feeding your own growth, set realistic expectations, see family discipleship as a way of life, not a program, be a guide, not a general, teach by your example, and connect to the local body. You know, I pray that you were encouraged today and that you will become the best disciple maker starting right there in your own family. Be encouraged in that. You know, let me remind you again, if you haven't jumped on board with the Wednesday night real life discipleship, you need to do that because this is me again just spurring you on, knowing that you need that in your life because we as a church body, that is what we are promoting and that's what we want to uh, just exemplify to you that the Great Commission, go and make disciples, is greater than ever before. So go parent with mission with purpose today. Amen. So happy Mother's Day again. I love you and thank you for joining today. Just have a blessed week. Amen. Amen. Wow. What a blessing it is to have such a powerful uh, spiritual mother for this house. She is such a blessing to obviously my own family, but also to this church family as well. So be sure to drop a comment below. Um, send her a message send her a gift just thanking her and uh, just celebrating her on this wonderful Mother's Day. But listen, before we let you go for the day, we do want to give you an opportunity to give of your tithes and your offerings. There are several ways to give here at Liberty Church. You can give online at lci.online slash give. Uh, you can text to give using the number 84321. Again, that number is 84321. You can use the Church Center app. You can find that in the app store. Just type in Church Center. Then you can log on and give on there as well. And as always, you can mail your checks here to 109 West Franklin. 
Again, as always, we are standing in agreement with Proverbs 19 that says there's power of life or death in the tongue, but we choose to partner with life. And so we will be making a declaration of life over our gifts this morning. Uh, there, the declaration will appear on the screen, and I invite you to read it along with me. All right, you ready? Lord, as we give today, we are believing you for heaven opened, earth invaded, storehouses unlocked and miracles created, positions and promotions, provisions and resources to go to the nations. Thank you, Father, that as I join my value system to yours, you will shower favor, blessings, and increase upon me so that I will have more than enough to co-labor with heaven and see Jesus get his full reward. Amen, amen. Well, listen, uh, don't forget Wednesday nights at 7 in person, Franklin Campus. Uh, we have real life discipleship going on. It is such an amazing uh, small group that we're able to come together and discuss uh, the process of becoming a disciple maker. So you don't want to miss it. It will be streamed on Facebook Live, so don't miss that. And then be sure to mark your calendars for May 24th, Sunday. That is our big regathering out at Legacy Park. We will be celebrating with a big baptism bash, and it is going to be a service that you do not want to miss. So mark your calendars. We'll see you on the 24th at 10 a.m. But until then, keep checking back here on Sundays, 10 a.m. on Facebook and YouTube Live. We love you guys. Pray you have a blessed week.